Hey guys, let's go ahead and do a hypothesis testing example from top to bottom. So we're going to start off with doing a single sample um, proportions test. And then in our next video, we'll do a single sample test of the means. And we need to practice all of our steps from top to bottom. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in. So here we go. It says that Jane is trying to determine people's exercise habits at Casper College. Student health claims that 20% of students and faculty exercise daily. Jane thinks that this is actually optimistic. She decides that she wants to test against this claim at the alpha level of 0.04. She randomly selected students and faculty to participate in her study. Okay, so that was our scenario, and now I want to go through our individual little steps that we're going to go through. Okay, so step number one, we need to do our type of data. And here we are, are we dealing with numerical or categorical data? Here we're dealing with categorical data. All she's going to go and ask people in this poll is, or her survey is just ask, do you exercise daily? And that's a yes or a no response. So the type of data here is categorical. Okay, so we've done step number one. Step number two, let's determine our population and parameters. So let's type in population and parameter. So our population here is dealing with uh, students and faculty at Casper College. Here we go. Students and faculty at Casper College. Okay. And our parameter of interest is the true proportion, proportion who exercise daily. All right, so we've gotten through one and two. So now we need to state our hypotheses. Let's start off with our null, our null hypothesis, which is saying that the true proportion is equal to some value. And we'll have the alternative hypothesis um, be the true proportion. And then we need to talk about that in just a second. So first of all, let's determine what is the hypothesized true proportion. Well, what we are going to go off of is what student health claims. So the true proportion that is hypothesized is 0.2. All right, so now we need to determine are we doing a less than, greater than, or not equal to test. And this basically lets us know are we doing a one tail or a two tail type of test. So here we know that we are going to be actually doing a less than 0.2. Here's the reason why. If we go up and look, it says that Jane thinks that this is optimistic about student health and you know generally when we're talking about people exercising we want them to exercise more uh, than you know uh, we want them to exercise every day rather than not exercising every day and if this is optimistic that 20 percent is we actually think that the true proportion is less than okay so we've got our null and alternative now let's go ahead and determine our alpha level so i'm just going to put in alpha equals and it just plainly states it to us at 0.04. Uh, we can include here too our confidence level then. Confidence level. And that equals uh, 1 minus alpha or 0 0.96. Oops, sorry, 0 0.96. All right, step five, identify our test equation and if we should even do the analysis. OK, so this is important. Um, so I have the raw data sitting right here. So we've got our yeses, we've got our noes uh, for our whether or not you exercise daily. Now, here is our roadmap. I've posted this up on the class website and this helps us know what equation are we supposed to be using. And in order for this to work well, we've got to start at the top and work our way down. So question number one. What am I testing? Are we dealing with numerical data or categorical? We already answered this. We jump back here. We did categorical. Okay, so we will go down the categorical route. How many are we dealing with right now? So this is how many how many populations are being sampled? Right now it's just one. We only have one population that, that we're interested in. We've only got one sample that we're taking, so we are going to go down this one route. All right, the next question is, is it normal? So this is all about sample size. And right now, on so the sample size is really, some books say that it should n times p, or the number of yeses, the number of noes 
should both be over 5. Some of them say over 10. We're in our class, remember, we are doing over 15. So we want to see if we are over 15. So let's go back and check in our Excel. So this this one, our roadmap, it says 5. And that, that's true for, for some cases, but we, we want it to be a little bit more conservative. So we have established in our class that we're using 15. OK, so let's see. Do we have at least 15 here? And it's like, yeah, we've got at least 15 yeses. Scroll down. And do we have at least 15 noes? And it looks like, yeah, we've got plenty of yeses and noes to be able to support um, our normality assumption. OK, great. So then we can go ahead and go down and check it out. We have our equations now, our one sample Z test for a proportion. And we've got the confidence interval equation. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do this both by hand and uh, using our R commander. And you actually have to use R commander even when you do it by hand, but there's a really easy way to do it and then a not so easy way to do it. All right, so remember this equation. I'm, I'm gonna keep it up on the screen. I give me just a second. There we go. Okay, I'm going to keep this guy up on the screen and we will try to figure these bits and pieces out. So, the first thing that we need to do, regardless if you're going to do this by hand or if you're going to use the R Commander tools, uh, is we need to get the summary statistics. So, the very first thing, let's go to data, import data, and we'll go Excel file. And let's name this something like, uh, we'll name it daily exercise. Okay, and I'll click OK here, and I we need to go ahead and open up the um, the file that has our data in it. So it's going to be in hypothesis testing. I'm going to click open, and then our commander asks you this question. Okay, sometimes it'll say sheet one or sheet two. I named the sheets proportions and means. We're dealing with the proportions one right now, and I'll click OK. So let's go ahead and click view data set to make sure that it kind of looks okay. And yeah, it does. We've got our yeses and our noes, and it's our exercise daily data. Perfect. So let's get out of there. Let's start off with going to statistics, uh, proportions. Oh, sorry, statistics. We'll do content. No, not sorry. Summaries. And let's do frequency distributions. We want to do exercise daily. We'll click OK. And we have these values. We've got the number of yeses. We've got the number of noes. We can work through this. So we're going to say that n, the total number of people sampled, is equal to, and I'm just going to type 126 plus 28. And I'm going to hit equals real quick. Now, hold on. Give me just a second. I want to run that again. So up and enter. OK, so I want to store these values inside of R uh, Studio. So I just typed n equals and what I wanted n to equal. And check it out, it comes up here as my value. You could do that in, in R Studio. You could also do it in Excel. Uh, if Excel is your preferred method, that's totally fine. I kind of like not having to go back and forth between two programs so much. But it doesn't matter. Uh, the steps are going to be the same regardless of where we save our variables. OK, so I've got my n. Let's go ahead and do p hat. So this is our sample proportion. This is going to be, I want the number of yeses. So that's going to be 28 divided by our sample size. And since I just stored uh, the sample or the, yeah, the sample size up here, I can just divide by n. And I'm going to hit equals and it says, hey, p hat's going to come up as 0.1818818. And it's like, okay, great. I got that. And if you look down here at the percentages when we did that summary, it actually got it as well as 18.18 .18, and in this p hat that's exactly what we have all right so great we've got p hat we're going to do p0 and that stands for the hypothesized true proportion all right so if we go back to our setup the hypothesized true proportion was 20 percent that's what student health claimed so we're going to come back in here and say p0 equals 0.2 and over here, check it out, the value popped up as 0.2. Okay, so now all we need to do is we could actually calculate out this equation uh, to determine our test statistic. Remember, this z-score is our test statistic. 
So let's go ahead and do that. We can say z equals, and since we've stored all these values up here, we can just type them in. So remember, when we do our hypothesis test, and we're saying that the true, mean, the true proportion is equal to our hypothesized proportion. Okay, so here's our equation. I'm gonna do a parenthesis, and I'm gonna do p hat minus p naught, and then I'm going to divide by the square root of p naught times one minus uh, p naught divided by n. Now since I've saved all those variables already, I can literally type it out as it is seen in our equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and I get this z score, this negative uh, 0.56 etc etc all right so that's my z score and we actually now have done our calculating the test statistic so we've got we'll say z equals and it's uh, 0.5641 so 0 0.5641 excellent now we just need our p-value p-value equals all right so what I'm going to do is I am going to just real quick just type z equals and now I've got this value and I am wanting to copy this copy and then I'm going to go look at what is that associated p-value right, so now I can go into my distributions my continuous distribution this is z so it's normal and I can go look at my probabilities and since, since we did this equation, we have already uh, standardized our z-score. So we'll leave the mean and the standard deviation alone. I'm going to paste this value in. And now we just have to determine, are we doing a, so this was the z-score that we got. Do I need to do a lower tail or an upper tail? Well, we do lower tail if our null hypothesis was less than, and upper tail if our null hypothesis is greater than. So I'm going to do lower tail because my null hypothesis is that the true proportion is less than uh, 20%. Okay, and then I just click OK. And if we come back to our studio, this is our p value. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to say p value is equal to this 0.28635. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue on my way. So now I have done six, now I just need to do seven. Do I reject or do I fail to reject the null hypothesis? Remember, we reject the null hypothesis if our p-value is less than alpha. Okay, so I'm just gonna say p-value, and then I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space and then put in alpha. Okay, so is p-value less than or greater than alpha? Well, p-value is equal to 0.286, alpha is equal to 0.04, so p-value is greater than alpha, so we would fail to reject. Okay, great, so I failed to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we've got two more steps. We're gonna start off with uh, writing the conclusion. Okay, so here we go. Let's write our conclusion. Say that we collected insufficient, I see, insufficient evidence. Okay, and then what I'm going to show is what does that mean? So if we collected insufficient evidence, it means that our p-value is greater than alpha. So we if you just say inf insufficient evidence, you at least need to like give us the alpha level, but this is probably uh, the most thorough way to do it. We could say alpha equals 0 0.04, and then p-value uh, equals uh, 0 0.28, or we'll, we'll just like do 29. This is fine. So in the conclusion, we don't have to like carry out to four decimal places. Um, just because this is like usually given to high level management. They don't need to see a ton of numbers, but they do need to see what is going on. Okay, so we collected insufficient evidence to reject the claim. Oops, reject the claim uh, that the true proportion of students 
and faculty uh, who exercise daily is 0 0.2. All right, so we collected insufficient evidence to reject the claim that the true proportion of faculty, of students and faculty exercise uh, daily is 0.2. So since we failed to reject the null hypothesis, we can just stop there. We don't have to go and do a full um, post hoc confidence interval or confidence bound. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyways just to show you why we don't have to do this post hoc calculation. And it's also going to be important uh, for when I do this with um, just shoving it through our commander, uh, the differences in the confidence intervals, whether we do them by hand or whether we do them in software. Okay, so we're on step 8.5 now. We're on this post hoc confidence interval and bounds. And so if we go back to our roadmap, we see, okay, if we wanted to make a confidence interval, this is what we need. So I need to make a standard error, but look, this standard error, instead of having the uh, hypothesized true proportion, we're going to use the sample proportion in order to get our confidence interval. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Here's what we do. We would do the square root, or I'm gonna call this uh, standard error, equals the square root of p hat times one minus p hat divided by n. And I'm gonna hit enter and that gives me my critical, or it, sorry, that gives me my standard error. Now I need to find a critical z-score with respect to the confidence level that we have set or with respect to our, our alpha level. Okay, so how do we get that value? So we did a lot of practice with this with our confidence intervals, so I'm not going to go or to spend a ton of time on how to do this. But walking through, we would go to distributions, continuous distributions, normal distributions, because we're dealing with the z-score, and we want the quantiles. All right, so we're just gonna put in the probability that we want. So I'm gonna put in 0 0.04. Okay, and we'll go ahead and we'll say, okay, so remember, well, we'll, we'll just leave it at 0 0.04 and we'll click okay. And we come over here and we get this critical Z value. So now that I've got this critical Z value, I want to, I'm going to copy this and I'm only going to copy the positive positive um, part of this um, because we will deal with positive and negative based on our confidence interval or bounds. All right, so I'm going to type this out now and for the confidence bound, we need this Z critical not to be confused with our z score that we got but this is the critical z value so i'm going to say equals i want to paste this value in and now i have my z critical all right so now i've got all the parts that i need i can do p hat or here we'll do uh we'll do confidence interval and we'll call this upper actually it's really a bound and this is our upper because we want to say that we are 96% confident that we're less than some values. So this is our upper bound. All right, and we'll call this equals. We need p hat, the sample proportion, plus our z critical. Okay, our z crit, we have it over here, z crit multiplied by our standard error that we calculated. Remember, we did this standard error calculation right here with our p hat okay and we're just going to hit enter and we look at our upper our upper is point zero point two three six two etc etc okay so let's go ahead and let's finish this up with our confidence interval now remember since we failed to reject the null hypothesis we don't have to do this part um, but it's going to show us well, doing it will show you why we don't have to do it. Okay, so we can say that we are 96% confident. Remember, we use our confidence level. So uh, we use the confidence level here. Our confidence level is just one minus alpha. We already calculated that. We are 96% confident. 
that the true proportion of students and faculty at Casper College who exercise daily is less than, we can do 0 0.23, uh, whatever, 62. Okay, so now you ask, okay, why didn't I have to do that? That looks like a good confidence, um, a good confidence bound that, that we're doing. Okay, well, uh, the, the reason is because the hypothesized proportion, which is 0.2, is within this bound. Remember, it goes from negative infinity to 0.326. So, hey, we're like 96% confident that it's less than, you know, 23.6%. And so the, the statement then is then, well, the, the hypothesized proportion is a decently probable uh, value for our true proportion. And so we failed to reject. We didn't get enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. When that happens, it means that the, that the proportion, the hypothesized proportion has landed inside of the confidence interval or bounds. So that is all of the steps from top to bottom when we do this by hand. Okay, so we had to do a whole bunch of steps, a whole bunch of little um, processes to get this thing through. There's a lot faster way to do this. Here's what we can do. Go to our commander, go to statistics. We're dealing with proportions and look, we have a single sample proportions test. Go ahead and click on that. We want to click exercise daily because that's the variable that we're interested in. Look at our options. We're going to set this up so that it looks just like how we have it set up here. Our null hypothesis is 0.2. Set that up. Okay, and we said that the true population proportion is less than the hypothesized proportion. So we're going to select this guy. And our confidence level is 0.96. All right, now I'd like type a test. Do I use normal approximation with the continuity exact by normal? Just leave it at normal approximation. All right, so I clicked those three options. I, I had uploaded my data already. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, apply. Okay, and when we look over here, we're like, Okay, this kind of looks weird. It looks still we've got the no's and the yeses. Um, but if you look at this, check it out. It did this hypothesis test with considering the proportion of no's. And that's not what we want. We wanted to consider the proportion of yeses. So unfortunately, there's not a button here that you can choose to do yes instead of no. We have to type in one single piece of code. It's very simple. Uh, and here it goes. So let me write it down generally down here first. So in general, this is what we have to do. We have to put the data set name, dollar sign, and then we do the variable name. And then we say equals, we say factor, and then we copy this thing. It's the exact same thing that we put inside of the factor. We just paste it, comma, levels equals C and then we do let me expand this out so that I got enough room we'll do level one and then comma level two all right and you're asking okay what the heck is this super easy so I ran this thing already and I want to know okay first of all I need to know the data set name well that's easy it gives it to us right here. It's my daily exercise. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it at the top. It has to be immediately underneath local. It has to be the first line of code that gets run when we do this analysis. So daily exercise, dollar sign, and then I need to know the variable name. All right, well, our variable name was exercise daily. Control C and paste it. Now I'm going to copy this whole thing right now. Copy. And then I'm going to say equals factor, and I'm going to paste that daily exercise and exercise daily, comma, levels equals C. Now I need to tell it, okay, what do I want first and what do I want second? Okay, so I'm going to put in yes first, and then second, I'm going to put in no. 
All right, so heads up. These are case sensitive. So not only do you have to have spelling correct, you must keep the capitalization correct as well. So I put in capital yes, because look over here, it says that it needs to be a capital yes. If it was all caps yes over here when we ran this, this would have to be all caps yes. If you're a little confused on what it's supposed to be, just go click on view data set and check to see how are the yeses and the noes, how are they actually coded in. All right, so once we've done that, I'm gonna highlight all of this and I'm going to click submit. So I, I highlighted the whole local part. It's got this proposition uh, proportion test and it's got the daily exercise line that we just wrote in to change. Are we going to do our test based on the no's or on the yeses? Whatever you want goes into the levels is the first one. So I wanted to do yeses and I'm going to click submit. Okay, so I'm over here now and check it out. So it's got my yeses, it's got my no's, and it's got my sample proportion. Remember our p hat, so if we type out p hat, it's the same, so this is good, this is really good, and we need a couple of things. Okay, so one thing that this does is it skips doing the, um, the test statistic value, and it just jumps straight into giving you the p-value. Well, let's compare the p-value. So we got 0.28635, they got 0.2864. Round up, we got the same p-value, nailed it. Awesome. Look how fast that was. Instead of having to do all these calculations and other things, we could go just straight to the kill. But uh, when we come here, we see that they did a confidence interval. And we're like, wait a second, we should have done confidence bounds. Well, all confidence bounds are written can be written as confidence intervals. The bottom end is just set at the limit. So in proportions, the limits are either zero or one. We can't have a proportion above zero or one, so it's set one limit at zero. And then it gave me another value. It gives me this 0.424. So we can say that we're 96% 90, confident that the true proportion of students at Casper College, let me copy this real quick. I'm gonna just type this in again. But this time it's 0.422. Okay, so notice we did this exact same test with the exact same data and we have slightly different values. Okay, so you're thinking it's like, oh gosh, what happened? Did I do something wrong? And the answer is no, you didn't do anything wrong. All of that is, uh, is correct. So, when we did our hand calculations, we actually used a very simple equation. And within our commander, it actually uses some more complex equations to get a better confidence interval. Uh, you don't have to understand the complexities of all of that. All that, that you need to know is that for your homeworks and, and labs, both of these answers will be accepted. Both of them are correct. Uh, I'd prefer you to use the R commander since we spent so much time trying to learn it, but if you are insistent upon doing it by hand, you may, and even though that these answers, they should be really close. I mean, these two are only something like, what, six thousandths apart from each other. They are very, very close, um, but this guy is better. And this, is, this only happens with the proportions testing. Uh, the, the means is actually uh, pretty dang good. Okay, so that's it from top to bottom, uh, how to do our hypothesis testing. Uh, and we did an extra step, even though we didn't have to do the post hoc confidence interval or bounds. We did it just so that we could say that we did it. And that's, that's it. Whenever you write, so like last notes, whenever you write your conclusions or your confidence intervals, so this is, let's label this conclusion conclusion, and then this is our confidence statement. Each of those need to be written couched in terms of the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Uh, so I will get these posted, or the, the file will also be posted so that you can run through this as well, step by step, and I hope that this helps you out. Good luck.